What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Skull Network. My name's Nick and we're not doing a recap this week. I don't think that that is uh, really necessary. We all saw what happened. Uh, I am here rather to give you some reassurance as to why this Minnesota Vikings team, uh, even though it is 0-2, is heading in the right direction. And I have some actual reasoning for it, but for right now all we can do is grieve. Uh, because of Greg Joseph. In reality though, I think this is a much better football team than a lot of people are currently giving us credit for. Yes, we're 0-2, but the team also could have easily been 2-0. Going from week one to week two, there was a drastic drop off in penalties. Now granted, there shouldn't have had to be that big of a drop off, but obviously there was. Dalvin Cook looks like he is back. He had a great game today. Didn't score, but he looked incredibly explosive. KJ Osborne looks like he is really bursting onto the scene as a wide receiver three. Tyler Conklin was able to produce today. The offensive line looked so much better in week two compared to week one. Kirk was not touched all day, and actually they were allowing Kirk lanes to run, Dalvin to run, and just so much improvement. I don't know what Zimmer did over the course of the Cincinnati game to you know today. It was just amazing seeing the improvements, at least on offense. Kirk has yet to cause a turnover this year, and he was literally the reason that we were in the game today. Started off incredibly hot in the first half, cooled down in the second half, but was able to drive us down the field to set up Greg Joseph this week. Now, obviously we know how that ended, but I don't think Kirk Cousins is going to be an issue at all this season. Normally it takes him a little longer than, you know, one week to get in his pissed off mode where he just lights up every defense that he sees and, you know, starts running the ball, all that good stuff. Looks like we have that now. Hopefully we can have that the rest of the season, but honestly with Kirk, you never know. And even on defense, even against an incredible mobile quarterback like Kyler Murray. There was a ton of pressure today. He didn't look incredibly comfortable a lot of the time. Daniil Hunter got him three times on his own. Now, the real issue that we still have with this team and the only reason I would really be worried at all is there's been quite a bit of blown coverage in both weeks. And, and that again is something Zimmer has to address over the course of the next week as we get ready for the next game. And honestly, I do think Rashad Breeland needs to get off the field because if he doesn't, he's gonna be in a wheelchair by week seven. The man cannot stay healthy for more than, you know, a handful of plays. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it's honestly really hard to watch. We were able to create turnovers this week, you know, multiple interceptions. We almost had that fumble. Nick Vigil has not been a starter most of his career and is really starting to come into his own. We were out Anthony Barr and still able to keep up with probably one of the most deadly offenses in the league. And we cannot forget that Chandler Jones was supposed to have about 12 and a half sacks this game. He did not touch Kirk Cousins once. Yeah, he had a couple plays where he disrupted Dalvin in the backfield, but other than that, we really kept what looked to be one of the best defenses in the league week one at bay for the most part. So yeah, there's a lot of feeling bad to do because, you know, the Minnesota Vikings are clearly cursed. But in reality, yes, this team disappoints us a lot, but you know, we still have to face multiple teams in the NFC West, everybody else, and there's no reason to think that we can't beat all of them. This team is much better than a lot of people really think. And if you disagree with that, I really wanna know your thoughts because there's way too many positives going right now and we just ran into an incredible team. And let's not forget, this was supposed to be an absolute slaughter and we lost by one. I don't know about you guys, but this went about as good as it can go in terms of a loss. Obviously it would've been great if Greg Joseph made his kick, but I mean, you can't have everything, I guess. I mean, we're Vikings fans, so just think about it. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of get this off my chest because I feel like a lot of people are gonna be jumping ship now that we're 0-2, but I mean, look at it. The best team in the NFC North is gonna have a one-on-one -on -one record at the end of week two. I mean, it's still early in the season and a lot of the NFC North looks like it's gonna be struggling. You know, if Aaron Rodgers comes back on, yeah, maybe Green Bay will start pulling away. But for right now, the Minnesota Vikings are firmly in a spot to stay within the NFC North race and actually compete with teams as much as people don't wanna think. There are a number of improvements that are probably gonna be coming to make this team even better. Hopefully when Christian Derrissaw comes back, that'll improve the offensive line even more. Hopefully Kirk will continue to use his legs when necessary. KJ Osborne, hopefully he continues to bud as a great star. And hopefully this defense can you know, work on the secondary. But I mean, aside from that, I'm seeing a lot of good here that a lot of people don't, but that's just my thoughts. And that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the button down below to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like as well. If you wanna share this video with anyone, you can do that with anyone on any platform. And if it's a crack dealer on the corner, that's your guys' best option. You guys already know. My name's Nick. I'll see you guys all in week three picks coming out on Wednesday. Adios.